What's up, everybody? It's J.D. DeServio from Black Label Society and Cycle of Pain here on behalf of Harky. Going to check out this uh, kickback in a little bit. It's like 500 watts of power, so I think it's going to be pretty cool for a little guy, man, like me. Um, been part of the Samson family now for like 10 years. Um, when I came in, originally just for the, uh, you know, for the wireless stuff, and um, didn't even realize that they were affiliated with Harky. And uh, so right away they asked me about the amps and stuff, and then we, um, I told them, you know, what I liked about them, what I didn't, and uh, we got down to work. And you know, they designed the high drive stuff, which is, uh, you know, really, really great stuff too. And um, so I'm psyched. I think this is going to be, uh, you know, just as just as good as the other stuff. All right, I, I started playing bass at, like when I was in sixth grade. I actually got a bass for real. That was the first time we got a bass. In fifth grade, we just, you know, we're dressing up like Kiss and. Uh, and uh, you know, using guitars with no strings on them and smashing them and spitting blood, you know, f not blood really, but food dye, because I'm Gene Simmons, you know. That's why I play bass, because of him. It's his fault that, uh, you know, I'm here. And um, it just, it, I was into horror movies as a kid and I was, loved music and it was just a perfect combination, you know. So when I saw the picture of them, I was like, that's immediately what I wanted to be. Didn't turn out to be, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, six whatever and, you know, and a seven inch tongue, but, you know, it's getting there. But, uh, you know, I, I, I really started playing because of KISS, and then as I got older, my ear developed more. Iron Maiden came out. It was like 1980, and uh, Steve Harris was, you know, a huge influence on me growing up in Geezer Butler and, and, and bands in that, you know, in that genre. And uh, when, when I heard, like, Phantom of the Opera from Iron Maiden off that first record, it just blew my mind so much because Steve actually did the bass solo in the middle and uh, it really got my attention and it just made me want to practice from there on in. So, um, you know, it's Steve, them, them two first Iron Maiden records for me are still great workouts and uh, you kids nowadays should check that out, you know. Especially bass players coming up, um, Steve is, you know, a legend. And uh, I was playing with a pick when I first started and I found out that Steve played with his fingers, so uh, that was it for me. I, I immediately abandoned the pick, started playing with my fingers and uh, tried to figure out, you know, the Maiden stuff, you know, back then. And, really helped me in my development so much as a kid, man. I mean, really did. And my, my techniques, you know? Because, uh, for instance, like uh, in Phantom of the Opera, Steve, he rides this one, this one, like, this one uh, figure. Like, check this out. Cool, you know, and then, uh, and that really built up my, my finger, you know, dexterity and, uh, you know, just, longevity I was able to, to go for a long time kind of like Viagra you know but you know in, in your fingers and then uh, from there on I, I you know like I said my ears started to develop and just you know got into more music you know more great bass players like I said I was into Steve Harris and Getty Lee and uh, and Geezer Butler already you know and then um, somebody like turned me on to Jocko Pistorius when I was about 15 and I really didn't grasp it yet, you know what I mean? I was still a kid, you know, I really didn't understand jazz at all or, or the harmonies that he was throwing at us, you know, which is another world. So, um, but then within a couple of years, I really did start to develop more into that ear, you know what I mean? I liked Al Dimiola growing up too, because he was a little bit, he was more diatonic, so I could kind of understand him a little bit more than like a jazzer, you know what I mean? Like Jocko or, or even Jeff Berlin. And I dug Stanley Clark, you know, at that period too. So it was a really a cool time for me, you know, when I was like about 16 till I went to Berkeley, you know. And then uh, once I got there, then it was just full on, you know, fusion, funk, all kinds of music that I hadn't heard before. So I was pretty psyched after that, man. Yeah, also when I, you know, when I turned 13, you know, it was 1980 and, you know, I was into Iron Maiden, they, they came out. And also the first Ozzy record came out with Randy, with Randy Rhodes on it, and uh, being a bass player, he influenced me more than bass players, you know, and he's a guitar player, you know, because I loved his melodic sense and, and everything he played, it was just so beautiful. So I would like try to, to get some of his leads down on my bass and stuff, and and uh, was really, really important, and then it turns out, you know, in the big scheme of things, he really impacted my life hugely, you know, because I, obviously, you know, then Zach went on to play with Ozzy, years, you know, after Jake, you know, after Randy, but it's it all a trickle-down effect and it all kind of came from Randy Rhodes, which is, uh, you know, our hero, you know, he's St. Rhodes, you know. So that was a huge part of my, my development too, you know, even listening to the guitar players. And I tell all bass players, you know, to check out other musicians. 
don't just listen to just bass players because you might get a cool idea from a piano player or, or from a sax player or something. When I went to Berkeley, I, I shed with all kinds of, uh, all kinds of people, violin players, um, sax, piano, like I said, a lot of drummers, you know, and um, just opens up your mind to, to different things and, and you don't get locked into one thing and get stagnant, you know. That's what happens with a lot of people. They get bored with themselves because there's not a, enough stimulation around them, you know, so... Me, I'm a boring, boring ass person, so I need stimulation, you know, because I need other people to interject. I'm only kidding, I'm not that boring. But anyway, but um, it's just cool to open up your ears and your mind to other things, and, and that's just only going to make you better. And in this day and age, you really need as much information as you can, as you can get on the instrument, in the studio, whatever it may be. You're going to find that you're going to be able to work more, you know, and that's really important for us as working musicians, you know. And, uh, and here today I'm using uh, my, my own JD signature model bass from Schechter. This is a five string model. I'm not sure these are out on, you know, for sale yet, but the four strings are. And I love, I love my Schechters. Uh, we, we came up with the design. It's neck through. Um, you know, you get the back loading or top loading, whatever you want. I like it through the back. It gets more sustain and stuff. You know, HZ pickups, which are passive, but an active circuit board. I like that combination. Works out nice for me. Uh, a nice wide neck, like, like kind of like a Fender P-Bass, but the radius is, is, is uh, flatter around the back, easier to play, nice, nice on your hand. And uh, I've been playing these basses now for like 10 years, man, you know, well, or nine, they came out with my, my own model. Before that, I was using Schechter for a year. And then live, like I said earlier, uh, I, I've been using the Harky stuff for a long time, and what I do is I, I'll split my sound. I'll use like two Harky rigs, and uh, throw like all my effects on one side with a with a, a splitter pedal. So when I throw on distortion, only one side changes and the other side stays clean for ultimate you know ultimate punch. Because you know, when you, when you're playing bass and you put distortion on, a lot of times it just it kind of all the low end sucks away and 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 the presence. So I dig that idea and I recommend that highly, man. Just take two even like these little guys. I'm sure they'd be great. And then split it with a with a splitter. Put your uh, your distorted or whatever effects you have in one side, and then the, uh, the clean side stays true the whole time, and it, it works for uh, really cool, cool, uh, cool sounds, man. And it keeps the fullness of the bass because we are bass players, you know, and we got to keep the bottom, you know. So that's what I like to do that, man. Uh, so after I left Berkeley, I've pretty much been on tour uh, the rest of my life, so it's been awesome. And uh, like I said, I love the Harky stuff. I've been using it for forever now, and uh, Live, it really it, it just cuts through, especially playing in like hard rock situations. You know, the, the distorted guitar is so loud that the bass needs to get through there, and, and Harky, you know, definitely you know supplied that for me. So I'm totally happy to use the stuff live, and uh, we got a lot more touring coming up, and I'll be using it, you know, forever. It's just good stuff, and I'm actually gonna be recording a record now, Black Label, coming up in the next two weeks, and I'm sure I'll be using uh, some some Harky head. Uh, I'm not sure which one yet because they have a couple new ones coming out, so I'm going to check them all out today and uh, I'll let you know, you know, in two weeks when I do the record. Thank you. 